All right, so now we're ready to finish up our, our trim and field tile. I like to let the clay stiffen up a little bit because if it's a fresh extrusion, I find that I tend to distort everything by touching it. So I'll generally let it set up anywhere from an hour to overnight. And I like to use some thin plastic. Food wrap works really well or any, any thin plastic will do. And I'll go and I'll smooth out uh, any imperfections just by running my hands over it. If there are places where you've had air bubbles, you can just fill it in with fresh clay. What I'm doing is really just getting all the little crumbs off of it. And I actually like to leave the plastic on when I make my marks for cutting. The way I do that is I've simply, I, ha I use this speed square, which is again something you can just get at the home improvement store. And I'll generally make a mark for the length of the trim. In this case, I want six inch trim when it's finished. So I'll make it about six and a half inches long uh, when it's wet. And six and a half inches is right there on the speed square. So what I do first is make my end cut. Before I cut, I'm actually just going to score the lines. And I'll place this mark right on this line. Score a line here. Move it down. Score and just work my way down the extrusion. So you can see that actually marking your lengths is not particularly uh, time consuming. Now a nice way to make a finished edge is you can go ahead and make your cut. I'm gonna use a knife right here since I've got a little bit of a crowded table. Make your cut with the plastic in place. And what this does is it gives you a nice finished edge. Then you just finish up your cuts. And I'll leave the end one undone. You can go back with the plastic. Um, a, a rounded edge is a good idea because it's also less prone to chipping. And you can do it with your fingers, but you just want to round off those sharp edges. And it's also nice so when the two pieces are put together, uh, you won't have any edges sticking up. And also, the edges are places where you tend to get crumbs of clay. So you can just go and finish those off and set the pieces aside. You can see that now that they're stiff, they're holding their shapes. The way I dry trim, uh, you can let it sit out like this if you like but I actually prefer to stack it on end. And what I'll do is I'll just put together several pieces like this. Now again, these have set up so they're not sticking together. And I'll just line them up on a wear board and I'll put uh, two bricks on either end. I found that when pieces are stacked on end and they're together, they'll dry slowly and they have less tendency to warp. So I'll do that with all of the trim pieces. And now I'll show you how to make some corners. Corners take more time than you can imagine <laughs> and also take up more trim. There's several different kinds of corners. This, for example, is a, a picture frame corner with this quarter round. And this would be used on the edge of a, uh, a picture frame or say a cabinet uh, countertop or maybe uh, to frame out a fireplace surround. There's inside corners and outside corners. And the way you start a corner is to make about a 45 degree cut. And I use this speed square. I just place the trim along the edge of it and score it. And this will be for a picture frame cover, a uh, corner. What I'll do is I'll generally cut out several of the same kind so that I have extras. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll dry fit it right on the speed square just to make sure that I've got a nice 90 degree corner there. And I do. So I'll just score the edges. And if you use slip for your joinery, just slip or use some water to put the two together. And then I just like to kind of sew the pieces together, 
top and bottom. I'm going into the clay and pulling some clay across. I use this plastic a lot because it just allows me to work with my hands but not drag too much clay along. There you have it. I tend to make corners a little bit longer and I dry and fire them this way and later I can cut them to size using a wet tile saw and then I grind the edges down with a bench grinder to kind of mimic the smooth edge uh, because some, depending on the size of the project you know the corner may be smaller or longer so it's better to make some ahead of time and make them large. This is one type of corner now. Another kind might be where you're you need trim that goes along the, the bottom of a hearth, for example. And in this case, the trim might be standing on edge. And what I do is I just kind of ballpark where to make my cut. In this case, I need to make a beveled cut. Again, I'll just dry fit it. Make sure that I've got a 90 degree. Be sure to sew the edges together particularly well. And with this one, I think I will just add a bead of clay in here to reinforce it. Not too much though, because it's got to fit around uh, a corner. So you can see this type of corner might be fitting around the bottom of a hearth. A lot of times what I'll do in this situation, especially with this curved trim, is I'll make I'll make a couple of different corners with slightly different angles and I'll actually send two sets of corners to the job site so that the installer you know, has some flexibility. I like to make finished corners though because they just give a little more finished look. The other thing that you can do is if you're installing work, you can simply cut and bevel corners uh, with a wet tile saw at the site. I'll show you one more corner which is an inside corner and I'll use this L-shaped trim for that. And for this, let's say we've got we've got something that needs to make an inside like that. This sewing works really well because I don't have a lot of room to just add coils. So I've got to do everything I can to make sure these pieces will not come apart in the firing. The beauty of this nice architectural clay that has a lot of grog in it though is it's very forgiving clay. It's not going to shrink very much so it allows you to work pretty fast and loose and in fact for these I won't have to baby them through the drying. I'll just set them on the shelf to dry and they're ready to go. The other thing you can do too is on these edges, they're a little sharp, just take your plastic and finish them off. So you see how